probably what's in order. I got into this race because I couldn't simply, I couldn't stand what was happening in Washington. And the damage that the Bush administration has done to this country in eight years is beyond that of any other administration in American history. I don't think there's any doubt that, that uh, this administration is going to be regarded by historians as the worst ever. Never in American history has so much damage been done in such a short period of time by, by this crowd. And when you think of, of how we were regarded around the world after 9-11, the invasion of Iraq cost us enormous respect all across the world, and now we've lost respect for our ability to even keep a, a, you know, the financial sector going. I was talking to uh, some people yesterday. Our lobstermen are really having a tough time now. We didn't serve lobster today, but if you can go afford, if you can afford to go get a lobster, you ought to help out our lobstermen by by uh, having a meal. There's a shortage of supply, and you know, you know what's happened to them? They, they, they are not able to sell or as much of their product as before because they normally sell it to Canadian processors in October. And guess where the Canadian processors get their credit? From Icelandic banks. I mean, so, I mean, you think about how this world, how we're all connected. And so when, when, when this administration, through its policy, screws up part of the financial sector, Everyone around the globe pays a heavy price. And here's what they did. The Bush economic policies, the Bush economic policies that Susan Collins supported and that I opposed, have, have, have led us to the edge of financial catastrophe. And what those policies are, every now and then we have these debates, and she says, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't support all of the Bush economic policies. That's her defense. But in 2001 and 2003 and 2006, she supported these massive tax breaks for the richest people in the country. Hundreds of billions of dollars going to people who make a million or 10 million or 50 million dollars a year. And the result is there is not enough left for education and health care and environmental protection and Head Start and community development. The things that, that, that states like Maine need in order to give people a fighting chance to get ahead here. She supported the Bush policy in Iraq, invade Iraq, and she supported those policies down the line. She won't support a deadline to bring our troops home. She let Halliburton and private contractors rip us off up to $23 billion, $23 billion, and for three and a half years, when she chaired the Chief Oversight Committee of the U.S. Senate, she refused to hold a single hearing holding Halliburton and other private contractors uh, to account. And if you listen to the debate, she says, well, I passed the law. And it's true she passed the law, but she passed it last year. The horse had left the barn, the money was gone, and she passed the law so that sometime in the future maybe, maybe it'll be a little bit harder for those contractors to rip us up. But the bottom line is, when you look at the, those policies, uh, the Iraq policies, the energy, she voted for the Cheney Energy Bill in 2005, 14 billion dollars in subsidies to the oil and gas and, and, uh, and uh, nuclear industries, Medicare Part D, you know, some of you have Medicare Part D. It costs too much. It costs the taxpayers too much. In all of these cases, she was on one side supporting the president, and I was opposed, fighting for something that was very different, that would be better for taxpayers and better for the people here. I have fought relentlessly for the middle class. I, I have voted for middle class tax cuts. I have a bill for middle class tax cuts, and I believe that if we're ever going to get this economy back on track, it's only begun it because we're going to focus on the middle class and make sure they have a fighting, people in there have a fighting chance to get ahead. Support the middle class and small business because that's what Maine, that's what Maine is all about. Now, nobody ever said they give Senate seats away. This is a tough race. It's always been a tough race. And from the very beginning, people said to me, you're going to win this race, but you're probably going to win it in the last weekend. So. We're going to win it on November 4th, but I need your help between now and then. So what I would like you to do is, uh, several of you have come up today and you said you're, you're going down and you're, you're uh, going, you're volunteering and making phone calls and you've been asking me, some of you, what can you do, what should you say in order to start winning people over? You're getting scripts, you're getting scripts from the coordinated campaign, all I can say is follow the scripts. Talk to them about how important this election is. Tell them how important it is that Barack Obama have support 
were from the U.S. Senate that if we send Barack Obama to uh, to the White House and he doesn't have enough support in the Senate, I'm telling you, the people in this country will be profoundly disappointed. But if we get it right and we have the kind of Democratic majority in the Senate that will allow him to drive his agenda forward, then you're going to see tax cuts for the middle class, not for the super wealthy. You're going to see an, an energy plan, uh, short term and long term, that will create millions of jobs across this country. Wind power, solar power, cellulosic ethanol, we'll run our cars on uh, less on uh, gasoline and maybe more on electricity and other fuels. There's so much we can do uh, here to create jobs and deal with this energy crisis at the, at the same time. And every American, every American's got to have access to affordable health care. When I've traveled around, well, come with me, just imagine, drive any back road in Maine, any Main Street in Maine, and go into the convenience stores and ask the people who own them if anyone in the store has health insurance, and I'll bet you in almost all cases they don't. They don't have health insurance because they simply, there simply isn't an affordable plan. Well, my plan is real simple. Everybody gets an affordable plan. The cost of business gets driven down. It's going to be, if you can't afford your, if you don't want to continue with a private plan, then there's a public plan like Medicare with options and benefits like the ones I have as a member of Congress. You know, we're, we can do this. It's a heavy lift. That's why I need to win the Senate race, one of the many reasons. So, we have a lot to do. Uh, in these last two and a half weeks, an awful lot to do. And, uh, you know, I'm asking for your firstborn and all the time you have and, and uh, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever you can do between now and then. Uh, but I believe, I got into this race not just because I couldn't stand what was happening in Washington, but because I also remembered that every now and then the United States government gets it right. The Congress works as it's supposed to with the President to bring dramatic change in a short period of time. And the, the, the last example that we know in this country was 1965 and 6. And after that big landslide election, the Congress of the United States in one year enacted Medicare and Medicaid and Head Start and elementary, federal support for elementary and secondary education, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and the Wilderness Act. And we have to do that again. We, we've got to get there. And we can't get there if we win two or three or four seats in the U.S. Senate. We need five or six or seven or eight or nine seats. That's what we need. And uh, so this is our chance to change the country. That's what we're trying to do in Maine. We're trying to change the country or create the conditions to change the country. And so, you know, we're giving it all, I, all we can these last uh, two and a half weeks. I am very grateful. Those of you, I see lots of faces of people who've helped enormously along the way, and uh, I thank you for that help. Uh, but now let's finish hard and fast so we can win this election on, on November 4th and uh, go into, get into one of those periods when Americans and people who live overseas will be proud of what we're doing in this country to change the country and make this a better place to live. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help and support.